everybody. We are live with Kim Coleman today. Uh, it's a nice rainy Florida day, actually. It's kind of rainy here in Pennsylvania also. It's nice because it's been so hot, but the rain is cooling it down a little bit. So it's it's nice to have the nice. rain. Well, we are doing an Elementor demo today and tutorial. We're going to walk through. I set up a demo site because I thought that would be easier to kind of showcase some of the things that you can do. Um, I really want to hear from people what they'd like to see from us with Elementor. Uh, how extensive do you want to be able to customize things? Um, it's always a, a trade-off between giving you lots of flexibility and also, you know, helping you get started quickly and just drop things in and get in place the way you need to. So I think we want to balance that at all times, but please put a comment in if you're here and you see something I'm demoing and you're like, oh, like, how'd you do that? Or um, something more. Oh, we got a wolfy dog. That's fine. <laughs> we don't mind dogs. Um, I don't know why yeah, you but... so upset. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a deep Elementor user before I started preparing myself to, to share with you today. So I've learned a lot in a short period of time. Um, I'm sure there's much more stronger uh, Elementor users out there that can really help me make sense of all this. Uh, so yeah, comments and, and keep chatting to us while we go through. Um, other than that, I think we can get started kind of showcasing. Oh, hi, Abby. <laughs> showcasing what we've built uh, and the demo site I've set up. So I might, actually, let me log out and I'll go through it from a from the non-member screen. So yeah, do you want to bring my screen up, Sam? Cool. There you go. This is Abby's first appearance on a live stream. We always welcome that. My dogs are up at our at our house, so they're not able to participate, but they would like to. Um, so preparing for this, I made a fictitious site. I'm going to make it available to you all to to launch through InstaWP to just input your email and it'll generate a version of this site for you. I don't have it quite ready because I want to remove some things I did for the setup, which is like cloning posts and plugins that won't be needed in the long run. Um, this is using Elementor Pro. I was trying very hard to get to a place that I didn't have to do that, but I just hit a block and I was like, you know what? I have to use Elementor Pro for this. I'll try to point out the places where I where I had to do that. I think it had to do with customizing the header and adding more settings and features to that. Um, yeah, but this is a fictitious community for antique car enthusiasts and it's actually photography by our producer here, Sam, who provided it for the site. I have to check with you, Sam, because this is gonna all stay in the demo site for people. So you're kind of like- do it. Use my photos. Yeah. So I think this is actually, not? is this your uncle's car? It's my great looking? uncle's car. Great uncle's it's a car. 1929 Model T, I believe. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So this was a homepage template. I just generated an Elementor using their free templates. Um, so this will be part of the thing. Um, when we to ask people to set up membership sites, we're always looking for a few clear call to actions on the homepage. So you know, Jason, my co-founder, has a lot of language that he iterates. Your homepage needs to do one thing, and that's get people to the pricing page, get people sold. Uh, you know, that isn't the case once they're logged in. The homepage needs to get them to the things that are of value to them. So I'm going to, in this demo, show us how to make that homepage call to action uh, different based on the user's logged in membership level. But um, we have this kind of homepage CTA that goes to our membership pricing page. We also have a prominent button to choose a plan in the header. I'm going to show you how to also, also add a login link to this header during our tutorial today. Um, I added like benefits, which you'll see a lot on homepages. This was built with uh, just like an icon block in Elementor, a heading, and then a descriptive text. You see that a lot on a features page or a homepage, just kind of a snapshot overview of what the features of the community are. Um, I was told recently by someone who specializes in uh, accessible typography that left aligned headings are more accessible to read. So I was tempted to make these all centered because it, from my design eye, I'm like, oh, center everything. Um, but that it's actually more readable when it's left aligned. Um, and then this is a pricing table I generated in Elementor and customized to match the color scheme here. Um, and I'll show you all the back end. I'm just going to talk through some of these areas. Um, Pain Memberships Pro generates pricing tables in a table format. We have an add-on to make an extended, um, more customizable columns type pricing layout. But when people are into page builders, we always tell them, you know, don't use our short code, don't use our block, use what you're familiar with. Use your page builder and generate your pricing tables on your own. Um, we have some good content. Maybe Sam can link up, link up 
about uh, building pricing tables with Elementor and other pricing tables plugins. Um, but really, unless you're changing your membership level pricing all the time, you're only going to have this in a few places. You can make it a reusable element and make it editable in one place. Um, but it really, it won't be dynamic. But if your levels are fairly static and the price is fairly static, um, the only thing I'll show you how to do is to make these join now buttons go to the right checkout page for the levels. I dropped in some testimonials here and that's really the end of it. So um, I'll just show you the choose a membership page, the same thing, the same layout, uh, and then our checkout page. Not really customized much from Core Paid Memberships Pro, just a real clean standard layout for your checkout page. Um, and then Elementor's kind of just dropped in a blog layout, all that stuff. So you'll get all these options when you, if you spin up a demo of this site. So I'm gonna log in. And I still have some residual from my other demo. What did I make my password? That's always a tricky one. Okay, so now I'm logged in. What do we see that's different here? The menu changed. And I'll show you how to do this with Elementor. Uh, we have a short code in Paymarchants Pro to pull in the display name of the logged in user. So now I'm like, I'm in the portal. I'm a member. Welcome, PM Pro Team is my display name. You know, it would say welcome, Kim Coleman, if that was what I was logged into. And then I just immediately in that main menu put the things that members want to access. So for this membership community, there's some courses. There's a forum, uh, live events and virtual or virtual events and a resources section, and then a link to log out. So um, this is all straightforward Elementor stuff to do. Um, if you click through to your membership account page, people will be able to see their memberships. I kind of did this in like a columns layout with Elementor. So I think that's enough show and tell and we'll get under the hood here. So the first thing I wanna show is that header and how did I do these two menus with Elementor? Okay. So this is Elementor Pro, so that allows you to set up, um, what what do they call them, theme builder. So there's theme builder, and then I set up a header in my theme builder. I told it to load this header on the entire site. Uh, so let's edit it in Elementor, and we'll look at that one more time. Okay, so there's actually two menus here. If I expand this column, you'll see there's two menus. And one menu is our non-member, logged out member view here. And let's look, the way that I control the visibility is under the, uh, in this Elementor panel, Advanced Paid Memberships Pro. And I said, show this menu in the case where the, they're not a member. So it's gonna show both to logged in users that don't have a membership level for whatever reason, and then visitors to the site. So people who are not logged in at all. And then I have a second menu that I duplicated and I, you know, I created this in the um, standard menu screen in WordPress. You could also just build your menus as, links right in Elementor. You don't have to really navigate over to that core WordPress menus system. Um, but then for this one in Paid Memberships Pro, I just selected all the membership levels that we offer on this site. Um, there's been some talk in our team about having like all users or all members as an option in case there's sites that have, we, ha we have had sites that have thousands of membership levels. For some reason, they chose to create like unique levels per person that signed up. So um, we're talking about having an all option here, and we're also talking about an exclude option. So raise a hand if you're in chat, do a plus one if that's something you'd like to see. And then let me move my navigator. I do have this choose a plan button, and that is shown also only to the non-member view. So what did I say I was going to do? I was going to add a login link. So I'm actually going to do this on the WordPress uh, menus area uh, where I set this menu up. And if you go to the menus tab, there's a paid memberships pro section and you can add a, a login and a logout link. So I'm gonna add that at the end of this menu and save it. So if I go back to my front end of my site, I am logged in. I'm gonna be logging in and logging out the whole time. I think I only shared my window. Maybe I should share a different one, but now we have a login link for people right on this in this menu. And then after login, It swaps that menu back with the logout link. So um, that's the first Elementor trick I want to show. You can put um, control visibility of the menu and have two menus in your header template and just control who they're visible to. You could do one for each membership level if you had very custom things to show based on different membership levels. Just keep duplicating and create different menus. Uh, let me show you how I did this welcome name in the header area. So this was done in the menu. Um, 
just in the label of that navigation label. Uh, so this is the short code that's part of Paid Memberships Pro. It allows you to pull the active logged in member or users current information about their level from their user information, any custom user field. So you can use this if you get creative to really personalize content throughout your posts. Um, you could have a members only post and you're reading it. And then there's a big interlude that says, Kim, grab a pencil right now, where Kim would be a dynamic field that updates based on who's logged into the site. So what a personalized experience. It might be a little jarring. People will be like, wait a minute, you know, why do you know my name? Um, but a cool way to do that, you can mix that in. So if Sam, if you want to pull that, it's in our general short codes documentation, the PM Pro member short code. Um, so that's that piece. Let's look at our membership levels page. I'm just going to navigate to it. And I'll just show you how we did this in Elementor. So I have two sections on this page. I didn't do any visibility for this section. I just made it all visible to all members. Uh, if you wanted to show different levels based on what, what level people were in, let's say you had a secret level that you could add on if you were a master mechanic, you could control that all with this visibility of the sections. But really there's a section at the top with this heading, and then there's another section with three columns. And within each, this is an Elementor Pro feature, it's called price table. Um, but I found it really easy to use and set up. Uh, the one I chose, it shows, um, it has like a header, which is the label of the level, uh, the pricing information, which I just input for each one and how it differed, a checklist of benefits, and then a button, which is the CTA. So let's look at how that button works. This is in footer. So the link here, if you can see that, let me put it in the browser here. If you can see that, the the way this level, this link is built, it passes the ID of the membership level you want to take them to check out for. So where do you get that information? You can get that in memberships settings under levels. There's an ID column here. So those are where you're going to need to grab the field. You can also click these links under allow signups to take you to the checkout page. And then you'll be able to copy that in from the URL field and paste it into the button text field anywhere or any button you make on your site. Um, the same here, the same button in the footer here, uh, level two, and then obviously level three for that third one. So that's kind of how I built the pricing table. I think there's some other options. I don't know what price list is. Let's look at that. Oh, it looks like a menu. We don't really want that. I did find a cool Elementor blog post here with um, unique table layouts and how they designed them. So I just went with the one kind of like this. I didn't do the rounded corners, but that's also a setting you could do. Um, they have some different options and it gives you kind of how it's done and how you adjust the price table uh, element to use that within your site. So that's a good blog post. I don't know, maybe I can put that in chat or Sam, if you can, uh, how to design price table from the Elementor website. So a good place to go to get ideas and advice for, for generating that pricing page. I did customize the membership checkout page slightly. And here I put a little CSS and I think I'm gonna update Core Paid Memberships Pro to be a little prettier by default with these checkout forms. Um, but I'll show you what I did to make this unique here in Elementor, I, to make it kind of stand out on the page. Let me close things. I've been screwing myself up here with Elementor by having two tabs open with the Elementor and then I'm going into site settings and I'm adjusting things, but it's kind of, it's not mirroring. So I want to make sure I have a few number of tabs open and only one that I'm really making Elementor changes. Um, so this is, it looks like nothing, right? This is the checkout page. And I just see this like PM Pro checkout. So it's really um, not intuitive, not great to edit from and really see what's happening in your site, but you just have to click over, use this eyeball to come and preview the site and see what's going on here. Um, but for this one, I made it kind of a little bit of a narrower width by using, what did I do? I think I added a section. I chose this one that kind of puts panels on the sides, kind of creates a more focused form. You don't want a form that's as wide as can be. You want it to kind of be, you know, more focused. You could put it on the left and you, some people would do that. We could um, put the form on the left and on the right side, kind of like a sidebar, show some testimonials, show like a refund policy, reiterate the benefits of membership in a sidebar. Um, I will say what people would love to do with Elementor is have these boxes separate 
so that they could wiggle them around the way they want. Um, can't do it right now, but if you're in chat, plus one, plus one, if that's something you want to be able to do, uh, it's work that we'll do when we focus on multi-step checkout. We'll also modularize the sections of the checkout form is kind of in our, uh, I won't say that bad word roadmap because I know if Jason's listening, he'll, no, no roadmaps because we're not promising we're going to do this. It's open source software. We we kind of have a pace of development that we have to follow, um, but it is something that we know users want, multi-step checkout and modularizing this form. So if that was the case, you could kind of divide up sections, have this section separate, of like a user field group, which is what this is. And then if you were on a checkout page for a level with pricing, you could also have the separate, oh, I'm just in like a, I can put my site in. I have it set to like pay by check because that's kind of the nicest testing gateway we can offer here. There are spiders all over my office, guys. I have one spider over here and one on my camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Time then they burn the office down. I know, maybe. Um, and then the payment information would be it's another module here. I'm going to put it back to pay by check just because I like the. There we go. OK, so what did I do to make this kind of funner and fancier? I put the short code block, but on the column here in Elementor, I added a, a background color and I added a background or uh, border radius with a box shadow. I played around with these settings here in Elementor to give it kind of like a pop-out effect, which is pretty cool. It's otherwise a pretty flat design, what we've done for this site. And then I didn't, oh, I guess I adjusted some padding here in the advanced settings. So that was kind of how I made the checkout page prettier. I did, oh, I hid the title of the page. So here um, in Elementor, if you click this gear, um, you have an option to hide the title for each page. Um, yeah, I don't know that it needs a title. You could totally have one. It's your preference for sure. All right. Another screen that comes up in the membership checkout flow is the confirmation page. I kept the same layout um, kind of like from the checkout page itself for this confirmation page. Let's remember, I, I told myself I wouldn't open a bunch of Elementor tabs. So this was the same. You know what I did? I just copied the section. I pasted it and I changed which short code was shown. I was like, I just want it to look exactly the same as that other guy. Um, so I just changed the short code here. It's PM Pro confirmation. Um, the default page short codes get added when the pages get generated. So if you use the PM Pro setup wizard to set up your membership pages, or if you did not use that and you just click the button to generate them, every WordPress page that Pain Members Pro needs on the front end has an associated short code. If you're using Elementor, you have to keep using those short codes. If you're using the block editor, you can use the blocks that we have that correspond to the same functionality. Um, but really with any page builder, you wanna use the short code, um, unless I guess some try to be compatible with the block editor, but um, use the short code option. I did add like a unique heading to this one, kind of a welcome uh, rather than, and I hid the, um, hid the title on this page also. So that was kind of how I made this page look a little funner. What else do we want to show? I think one thing, what was I talking about saying? Oh, I was talking about editing my homepage and showing a different um, kind of CTA for people once they're logged in. So let's do that together, unless there's something Sam wants to interject right now with the demo. No, you're doing great. You're doing good. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is duplicate Uh, let's do something cool here. We'll say, hey, Pim Pro member. All right, let's see how something like that will work. It's going to look a little wacky here. Um, see, I didn't bother you. We'll make stuff up. So we could link these up. I was just off the off the rails. Why is that? It's like hard to edit. I don't know what it really says. Okay. I need a bigger monitor. I'm just on a MacBook. There. Okay. And I think what I'll do for this version is just make it go to, you know, view my membership account.
just to interject real quick while sure. you're doing that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but at this time, it is not possible to divide the checkout process into a few steps or pages. It is one not page right only. Now. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think some developers have done it. There are some sites that have done it. Um, but we're kind of paving the way for that work right now. We, by having users always created at checkout was the first step of that because multi-step checkout, you know, will make the user in one step, will customize fields in one step, will uh, gather payment information in one step. So we're excited for that phase of things. Um, it's not a forever away thing. It's definitely, it gets mentioned every time we talk about development, you know, yeah. it gets mentioned, we say like, but at this time, the answer is at this time, no. not possible. Yeah. Oh, so it worked. Okay. So I, I was just kind of working and working and working. So my original hero section is my CTA. It's my one thing the homepage needs to do. Choose a membership level. Under the advanced, I made pay memberships per require for non-members. And then I duplicated that hero. And I customized it. I made the heading a little bit more user friendly to our logged in members. I gave them direct access to some things and a direct link to their account page. So because I'm logged in still as a user with a membership level, I get that welcome. Good to see you back with these links to different membership areas. And I can jump right back to my account. That's fun. Matthew has a question. <laughs> How can I edit the text used in the short code for the checkout? So there's a, um, right now it's a code-based approach. We can pull up that recipe. If you wanna tell us which text you wanna edit and we'll do that snip. Um, we'll do that piece. But I'll edit like, um, let me pull up the article. If I can find it here. This is a pretty popular one. You know, we call it membership everywhere, but some people call it subscription, which is fine. You can call it a subscription, um, but I'll just copy that snippet and go back into my admin. I have a plugin installed in this demo site. If you spin up a demo yourself later, you'll see it. It's called Code Snippets. It's my, I'm now becoming my favorite way, especially because I'm doing more development on these remote sites to manage and label little code snippets I'm using in my membership site, little things that I'm tweaking um, for people who have our standard or plus or builder memberships. We have like hundreds, I don't even know how many code recipes on our site that change the way that uh, things happen in the site that extend it, that add extra functionality, that modify the core functionality. So let's add this um, filter. So this is looking at everywhere we say membership level and membership and swapping it to subscription. So I just copied and pasted it as is. Let's see if it works. With code snippets, you can turn snippets on and off. Oh, that's... It helps to label it. Especially if you're getting support with our team. If you're using code snippets, you have well-labeled snippets and support goes like, oh, I think you know, do you have any snippets on your site that set an expiration date for everyone? And then you look in your snippets, you're like, I do. Uh, it can help you troubleshoot things pretty quickly if you're uh, a little intentional, not rushing like I am right now through this thing. So let's see. Oh, that was my chat GPT window. How did this adjust things? So rather than saying membership level, it says your subscription, you have selected the apprentice subscription. So that's like a drop-in code recipe that just changed text, but you can use it to really change anything in the site. So if you are still there and you want to tell me what specifically you want to change, we can target that directly. There's a lot of different ways to, to customize checkout. I haven't heard anything else from Matthew. Okay. One thing people don't like is this, the price for subscription is $0 now. That is fixable with our level cost text add-on. So not a Elementor thing, but level cost text here. Let's you change the way the price statement looks on a per level basis. And then it also has some kind of global settings for how cost text appears. So I'll say like use free instead of $0 if I update this on the site. Is it taking a while? 
Tell me if my internet's slowing down. The price for subscription is free now. So instead of it saying zero dollars, it says free in that place. There's a few other things you can do uh, with level cost text, or I could just edit that membership level. I haven't used that add on before. No, it's good. You could just say free or free forever. Let's say. Oh, oh, um, we may have gotten a, like a misunderstood. Matthew oh. says, I want to change the default user fields for when someone registers. Oh, okay, cool. There's a few ways to do that. Um, if you want to add fields, that would be done under settings, user fields. If you want to remove fields and not show so many fields, let's go back to the Payments Pro site. Um, what is that like reduce checkout? I always like come up, it's a, like drawn to my memory book of like, what did we call that blog post? Uh, we have uh, recipes on our site that will remove the duplicate of like confirm password, confirm email if you don't want that to be gathered. And then we, this article also has some ways to generate a username from their email address, have email only sign up, which is the most simple approach to do. Um, so let's let's look at this snippet. This is the one Matthew that Matthew will... would like to add, but also remove default. Okay, so let's do our snippet. Let's add a new snippet. This is name and email. This is to skip password. Oh, I want to just do the, let me pick which snippet I want to use. This is not the snippet I want. Um, let me find a better one. This is the one I want. A little more straightforward. These two filters will just hide the duplicate um, password and email field. So that's like one way. All right, let me go back here. Let me log out. Okay. So now we have, we don't have duplicate password, duplicate email um, with this approach. So that's one way to reduce fields, that article. And then another, the one we were on before, can generate username based on email address. Email address is always required. Password can be generated, but um, it just will make people have to reset their password at the end. We don't recommend or have good tutorials for passing, for sending passwords or setting default passwords for people. Um, people ask that. They're like, can you just put their password in the confirmation email address? Uh, it's not the safest thing, not the smartest thing to do. I know why some people like to do it. Um, and then it does streamline checkout. So if you're thinking like, oh, you know, people really are, I'm getting a lot of like people dropping off on my checkout form, definitely looking at the complexity of that checkout form, reducing the number of fields can help, especially for a free membership level. But if people are already having to put in a credit card to make a payment, then I would suggest keeping password field and letting them choose it themselves. It'll, you know, if they're using one password or last pass, I use one password. It'll save it right away for them, and it makes it even easier for them to access their account after they sign up. So we can look at the when oh, I have to log in. And while we're also doing this, Matthew's asking, is there a way to remove all of them and then use their own through a new group in user fields? I haven't done that. Theoretically, maybe. Wouldn't it be kind of difficult, though, because like we have to create the WordPress user? Yeah, you'd have to recreate the user fields with the exact name fields. We can try that maybe when we we can try doing it. We'd have to unset all the default account fields and then add the fields back with their own name. You can add fields to these locations so it all gets kind of grouped together. Um, we can try it. I don't know how password would behave because we don't have a field type called password. That's the that's the one I think wouldn't work right. And then there is validation done on these fields. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to say that that's probably not the best decision to make. If you just want to add fields within the same group as these fields, you can do that with user fields. It just would be the coded fields route. Um, There's hooks within this area of the um, checkout form to add and insert fields to that same location. Um, you could also probably get clever with CSS and um, use CSS to make things look like they're in the same group. 
So like just making it look like it really went together and then you could still use user fields to do it. You could just hide the heading. Um, so it would maybe have the same effect at the end of the day. It's not perfect if you really want to do something unique, like have, you know, reorder the fields. We've had people do that with JavaScript. That's also an option. Um, yeah. What was I doing? I was looking at the way user fields are coded here. So for this site, we add one field group called company information. We show it on both the user profile and the checkout for all levels. And there's just two fields, two free text fields. Um, so this is a not super new, but newer feature of Paymerchants Pro. We've been a plugin for 12 years and, and a GUI to create user fields is like a, is it a year old, Sam? Not even? Not even. Um, um, it's probably approaching its year pretty soon. It's approaching its birthday, but it's yeah. been a huge improvement. I think people really like the flexibility of creating fields through this format. And it's really reduced our support load, which we were happy for. Hopefully people are, you know, more in control of their membership sites, which is always the, the way we want to move things. Yeah. Samantha just wants to confirm that there has to be a username and they can't just use email and password. You can just use email and password. Let's find that recipe for email only sign up. This one's name and email. This one's only require email address. Let's try this one. I'm going to turn off our snippet for confirm password, confirm email. Did it do it? Wait, okay, there. And let's add a new one. So we'll call this, you want them to, to add password? Let's do email only. And then we can always customize it later. All right, let's see if this just works when we drop it in. I have to log out. Okay. We dropped in code and it's email only sign up. Do we think this is going to work? All right. Should I turn off the show fields to check out now? Okay. How streamlined can we get? It's a free membership level. Oh, oh, I tried to turn off the field. Well, we'll keep the fields. <laughs> I was logged out of my admin account. Okay. I might already have that. All right, let's see. Info plus cars. See if it works. We've played around with these recipes a lot. Oh, it worked. Okay, so that's email only. Sign up. Uh, I We probably could adapt that to be email and password only, but what did it do? Um, it strips and makes their username. It made my username info cars. So it took funky characters out of my email address and left off everything from the at over. So it still makes a username because WordPress requires us to use a username um, in this site. But depending on your site, you may or may not um, need that field. It's used on our member directory to uh, create unique URLs for people's profiles. So you'll see here, that's like their username is used in the URL there. You can also change that if you want to. But like for this one, it'll be info cars as their username. So yeah, that recipe is on the three ways to reduce form fields at checkout uh, for email only sign up, um, and it generates all the other stuff. Yeah, it worked. Whew. All right. So we do have someone asking if all the field stuff is elemental related, not specifically, but we are about all like helping people customize their membership sites. So yeah. as we get questions, you know, we may not always be on the yeah. exact topic of the open office hours, but it's always about educating and how to use PM Pro. So yeah, no, the user field stuff is pay memberships pro that recipe um, that would be edited under memberships settings. And then you'll see a user fields. This is all um, you don't need to be using Elementor for this. If you're watching this, uh, event today and you're using Divi or, you know, I think we integrate with Oxygen Builder and we integrate with Beaver Builder. There's one other one. I don't remember the name. Site something. I don't know. We have a doc page on our site about all the page builders. SiteGround is hosting, not page builder. Oh, yeah. What's it called? 
site origin. There we go. So those are the the builders and the specific things you can do with each of them relating to, you know, visibility of things and, and customizing things and how they how they work together. Um, yeah, but user fields is a core pay merchants pro thing. Did you have any other Elementor demo things to do? I thought we could look at like protecting content. There are some like weird things that happen that I think we're trying to solve. But if you make everything hidden to members on a page without excerpts, sometimes it's a little weird. So uh, I'm re logged in. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make a page. We could probably do it with a blog post. I'll do it as a page. Let's add a new page. Actually, let's use our about page. Let's pretend we wanted our about page to be hidden from members, let's say. So still with Paid Memberships Pro, you can do require membership at the page setting. So this is the WordPress block editor. We would click here to navigate into Elementor to edit content in the page builder we know and love using for this site. You could still set membership requirements outside of that on the Paid Memberships Pro a default way to do that. So if we set membership requirements here, I do have a membership level, but I'm going to take it away from myself. I am actually not a master mechanic. So that was me being a fraud. <laughs> I'm a fraud. Okay. Okay. So now what we see is an excerpt of the content, which is something we change in advanced settings in Pain Merchants Pro. And then this message of who can view the content. Um, I'd love to be able to give people a way to customize this in Elementor, give that like a fancy look. Uh, that's not available right now, but maybe in the future we'd have like a, at the site or at the theme building settings in Elementor, a way to make that stand out more, look a little different. Um, let's change our settings. We still have that uh, snippet in place to, I'm gonna change my settings to hide excerpts. And we'll see what that looks like for this page. So then now I only have the title and then this section here. Um, there were cases sometimes that this was like bleeding edge to edge. And I think that was if you had your default Elementor like page um, not to be bounded. So some people do that because they like everything edge to edge rather than just making a certain thing in the site edge to edge. So... I have to, uh, am I editing the single page template? Okay, single. I'm on the single page template, right? So this section, I have it as boxed. If I said full width in Elementor, and I go back to that about page, you'll see how it's just edge to edge and it's like not that cute. Even sometimes people would have in Elementor, we've supported them. Um, oh, that's on the single page level here. Let me edit this. I'm going to get into my problem with all these Elementor tabs open. All right. Let's say I didn't even want to show the title of this page here. Okay. So this is something people will say in support, like, oh, I'm using Elementor. It looks really crazy when people don't have a membership level. And I'm like, yeah, it does. Look at that. Um, and that's really because the theme itself is boundless. You're not showing any content to members. So one thing we recommend in this case is a redirect away recipe. You know, if you're really going to protect, what is the value of a person landing on a page like this? It's kind of like nothing, right? So we do have a recipe to redirect non-members away from members-only content. This ends up being more coding than page builder in this talk. Sorry about that, everybody. But if we put this recipe in our snippets, and activate it. Now, if someone were ending up on a page like this, it just boots them to the pricing page, which I think is the best approach. Um, if you really are showing nothing, you're not even showing a page title, um, what's the value of them landing on that page? An alternative option is for this page in the Paid Merchants Pro settings, don't restrict it here at all. And then when you're in Elementor, what you can do is for this section, set your visibility for your membership levels. 
and then I wondered how you like add oh you add a section above this is weird and then in here you'd add a section like this contents for let me add it here you know oops you can't read our about page <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> really strange okay like you have to be a member. Okay. And then we'll add a button to join, view plans. Oh. And we'll go to their membership levels page. And then we'll probably add a login button also. Let's say, uh, how do we do this? I'm trying to remember how I make this like inline here with inline. We'll add another button. To our login page and we'll also make this one in line and I think can't you do like spacing how's that work okay, let's put it on this guy trust me I, I'm very new to Elementor I'm just I'm kind of impressed with myself right now what I'm doing here <laughs> all day and all We're week actually, great. Sam, was, Sam was hearing me go I don't know I just don't know. All right, let's make this one like plain, kind of like that. Sure, a little subtle. Um, so this section we rather want to be for our non-members. So it's a lot more building. Um, you could make this message something that you repurpose. So I think Elementor has that as like, oh, here, like a template. Like we can call this the like non-member section. Or protected page, right? I mean, called out to do my job in chat. Uh oh, what aren't you doing? I forgot to throw the uh, redirect non-members oh. <laughs> away. Oh yeah, yeah. How could we? Good. How could we? All right, what did I do? Okay, so I made a section. I, I saved it to these reusable templates, and that's where does that? I don't know where that goes now. I thought it would go here to globals. Save your first global widget. That's what I assumed. I so did say fun just, fact that I also learned in the comments, um, and we can probably test this too, not that I don't believe Matthew, but when adding an Elementor table of contents, if they are blocked by membership level within Elementor, it mm -hmm. does not take all of the titles. Uh, what's a table of contents block? Is that for a post or is that for... Uh, like, does it make a, like a whole sitemap thing, or is it if you're in a members only post, the table of contents block that's generated for the post excludes headings if you're for non members? Is that, yeah, that makes sense because I can't see it. I don't know. I think it's like a content thing, like Melementor is looking at the content, and in the members case, there's no content on the page to look at. A lot of those TOCs are actually done and generated by JavaScript. For a so, post, yes. Yeah, when you load a post on the front end and load that TOC, I know this is how the Yoast one does it. It scans the content and generates the TOC like like as the page is loading with JavaScript and says, okay, find me all the H2s. So if Elementor can't see it, if the user can't see it, Elementor can't see it, it can't generate the table of contents. I don't yeah, know what Matthew a good workaround. It, it blocks the headings that are blocked. Yeah. So that makes sense. I, I, I can see why you wouldn't want that to be the case. You're like, I wrote this huge article. There's all these valuable headings. Check out all this teaser content and become a member. What you could do in this case is what we're exactly doing here. We could try this. Um, would that work? The section From the new container, choose template. I'm not sure what that means. Is that how I insert what I just saved as a template? Maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay. Show us. We're going to try that. All right. So what did I do? I'll Let's do just show what we were working on here. I made a, oops, you can't read this. Maybe I'll make this section like a little bit more padding. It just looked a little weird to me, a little like small. So this is instead of redirecting away from content where you show nothing at all, you just show this kind of, oops, you can't read this thing. This might get Google mad at you. Google might say like, all your content's the same. What are you doing? You know, these, it, and it can't <laughs> um, index it, but it's an option if you don't want to do that redirect away or if you just want to craft a custom message for what members can and can't see separate of your members only content. Um, so you don't look at the Painters Pro page level setting 
um, for require membership. Instead, you just do it in the builder. You add a section, you say paid versus pro non members, you add a section and you put, give it the levels that can see it. So um, you just have to rebuild the members only thing. Should we try a post with the table? Can, of block? Real quick. Okay. Will PM Pro be expanding on building more widgets for Elementor that can provide all the options without using short code and also give the ability to style it? I think we want to understand exactly what you said, like what you want to be able to do. I, I noticed that WooCommerce just came out with like better product page building with Elementor elements. Um, we're talking to the Elementor people, which is cool, kind of a budding relationship. So we want to be good citizens with them. Um, when we look at the facts, like, half of our sites are using Elementor, which is kind of mind boggling how many people are have Elementor as a part of their website development flow. Um, so important to us to do it. And you know, if you're there and you can like send an email and say like, hey, I'm willing to talk. I would love to talk one on one and really understand like what tools you would need to make things work better and look better for your membership site. Um, I think I said at the start, if you were here, if you weren't, um, it's a toss up between making things that are easy to just drop in and we know your membership site is going to work. We know all the pieces are there to make it functional and that the UX is what members are going to expect. Um, and then the flip side of that is customizability and giving you the ability to move things around and change things. Um, I could see a lot of ways now that I know Elementor better from the last couple of days working with it, I could see ways to add paid memberships pro level settings, you know, to the site settings section, right? Um, Things like, you know, boxed content for the membership site, a little widget to help you design that members only content call out on protected posts and pages. So I think this would be a really cool place to insert some of our settings. And maybe if we activated WooCommerce, we would see what what's happening there. And if that's what's what they're doing to to give you those builder tools. So if you're willing to have a chit chat with me, show me your site, show me what you're like, Kim, like I can't edit this thing and I'm so frustrated. Like, I don't know CSS. There is a little CSS in this site, a tiny bit. Um, you know, and I, we don't want people to have to know how to code CSS to do this or ask ChatGPT to code their CSS for them. Um, but yeah. That's what I'll say. Anything else or should we do a post? Should we try this TOC thing? And Let's do it. All right. What was I hoping we could do? I think I have some posts actually that aren't real posts here and Sam's pictures. We can see more. All right. And it's still doggo ipsum, which is funny. <laughs> doggo ipsum about cars. I guess I can't do this in here. I have to do this in Elementor, right? All right. So the, you can't edit it, insert it within a text editor. You have to insert it like somewhere else, right? While you work on that, just so everybody knows, I'm dropping a link to our Paid Memberships Pro versus WooCommerce uh, comparison guide that we have. Um, someone asked earlier, like, why would I pick PM Pro over WooCommerce? Um, so that's a good read for you to um, dive into that. I do. Maybe it doesn't work like this. You have to put the headings outside the text editor. Is that true? That's the way it is for Beaver Builder. Okay. I made a crazy thing. <laughs> okay, hold on. What are you uh, doing, Sam? What am I doing? All right, let's see. Heading. And now I'll put it here. Okay, I'm going to call it that one. Okay. And then I'll put another text. Do people write blog posts like this in Elementor, really? I can't believe it. That can't be how people are writing blog posts. I hope people I are using the block editor. Maybe Strange Cat asks, is there a way to allow Google to index protected content? I think the answer is no. There isn't, but the workaround is the um, limit post views add-on, which is a trade-off, but it will allow you to um, give anyone coming to the site one free view of stuff, which people are like, no, no, thank you. I don't even want that. Um, Google's pretty particular about paywall content and indexing it and giving you value for things you're just going to hit people with a paywall for. Um, you know, sites do get away with it in small ways. Like you'll see like New York Times articles get indexed 
but yet you hit hit the site and after you visit three posts the third post you get hit with a paywall to sign up for that's what limit post view does so when people want their full site to get indexed we tell them use limit post views and set the limit to one that means google can index your entire membership site content or just posts you can say which um, content type you want it to index uh, to give limited views for and then after people hit that one view they're redirected to your pricing page so you'll see that you know if you're on like a recipe site like i like going to bon appetit for recipes and i have to like play games and ask my friend to open it and send me the pdf if i've already used my view but they also give you a limited number of views um, in a certain window of time um, so that's the add-on you'd want to use to do that. That's the best way uh, to let your bot, let the bots index your full content. Um, it just means that members are also going to get one free view, one taste of your content. Um, there's some ways that Google says they have like paywall content visibility and letting you index paywall content, structured data, structured paywall content. Yeah. Um, I've looked at some of it. Indexing paywall content gets talked about a lot um, and, and how this stuff all works. So I've looked at it. I've proposed it to our team. And every time we look into it more, we're just like, you know, this isn't what Google really wants you to do um, to make things like not visible and what can be free and what can be paid. But if you have a developer and you want to dig in to what this looks like, um, this would be where to start for having Google bots index your stuff. Fun. Limit post views. All right, limit post views, is there like a way to give heading. a reader a heads up that there is only one free article left? Yeah, we have a cute um, tutorial and it probably needs tweaking. Don't we have a tutorial that puts like a little banner? I'll try to find it. You can go back to your blog post. No. Oh, we should trash that article, Sam. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. I'm on my other screen. It was like a nothing. Oh, here. Okay. You've reached the limit. So this one integrates with, um, this one has a recipe to put like a countdown bar. So if you see my thing, um, it's like two of three, log in or subscribe now for unlimited access. Uh, it's pretty st um, theme specific, so it might need some tweaks from your developers. Um, and then here's one that integrates with Pop-Up Maker, um, which is a plugin that we like. And we're friends with Daniel who makes this. Um, it puts a pop-up after people uh, hit that paywall. You've reached the number of limits to continue reading, become a member, join now. That's two ways to do it. I think we also have like a recipe to blur content. So you'll see that on the New York Times. You'll be reading, reading, reading. All of a sudden, it's like everything starts to get blurry. And then I you wrote see, that like, one. Overlay. Yeah. So that's another option people like to do. Um, I think by default, limit post use redirects away when the limit is reached. So you're on a post, you go to a second post, it'll boot you to the levels page. You can undo that redirect behavior and keep them on the page. And then it would show them like just the standard protected content message, which is also useful for people to see like, oh, why is this one protected? And you could customize uh, the membership, uh, required membership messaging in your advanced settings to say like, you got one free view, you use that, you know, that kind of thing. So there's a few approaches to that. Good question. I'm not seeing my headings get updated in my table of contents when I put headings in here. Does it take a moment? I don't know, ma'am. You know more than I do. Before. Let's see. Oh no, because this is a members. Maybe it's because it's members only. All right, let me give myself the level. I'm not, oh, because I said uh, you can't even see content. Let me. Where's my memberships tab? Oh, I keep looking for the memberships tab and it says subscriptions. I should turn off that recipe. I'm really confusing myself. Okay. Let's say show excerpts. What I was going to do, try to do is put it in not restrict at the post level, just like we did when we played around last timeless car content. Okay, so now it's a public post. Now the table of contents is funny because what did I do in this paragraph? I don't know how to fix this. Can I, oh, here. 
That's because this all thinks it's an H too. Let's get rid of you. Remember how my text got all crazy big? Let's just delete this one. Okay. Can you like select multiple things here? I couldn't do that. No. Duplicate. Where'd it go? Okay, duplicate. Now my whole team's gonna be like, Kim, you're the Elementor expert. Mm -hmm. You know more than anybody. Now I know more than anybody about Elementor. Not the people on this stream, you all know more than me. All right, why is it doing like these like empty ones though? I'm not sure why it's doing that. Do you see that? I like the oh, Yoast weird. table of contents block. I, I do like that. Yoast. Except for the fact that you can't have reusable blocks in your table of contents. That's the one thing That's that frustrates thing. me about Yoast. All right. So this is a public post. We want to see what happens when we put, let's duplicate this section. And we'll make this one the members. No, it's still only showing those three. So even though I can't, I have it protected. No, that won't work. Hmm. No, I don't know if there's a way around that. I guess just custom building your TOC, which actually we did for a long time at Pay Memberships Pro before we realized Yoast had a table of contents block. We were building our own anchor links in post content. So, you know, that's not a fun thing. You could do it as a public post, preview it, and then copy the HTML into like a block in Elementor. But I don't know if there's a way to give Elementor visibility into that stuff because of how Paid Merchants Pro strips it out, even before the content renders on the WordPress on the front end of your site when that content is returned from to, to load in the site. Paid Merchants Pro strips the things that are, are not available. So it's not like it's, it's hidden here in the source of the website, you know, just like invisible to everyone. It's actually not there, which is the best way to protect it. But I guess the trade-off is that you don't um, get that full table of contents visible. Boo. Boo. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like thinking about the things you could do that would be silly. You could like have headings, set CSS to make them invisible, and then only make the paragraphs within. The table of contents yeah. is dependent on the H tags and the PM Pro does not render it, then it will not display it. Yeah. No workaround for that. Nope. All right. Custom so, building a TOC block is the workaround. Yeah. yeah. And I really, I mean, I didn't hate it, but now that we have the Yoast it's table harder. content, it's so much better because yeah. creating your HTML anchors and all that. Yeah. It's easy to get screwed up also. Like I noticed when I, when I'm refreshing old content on our site, I'll realize like, oh, like these anchors are incorrect now. We changed the heading. Um, and that's something with the WordPress block editor that when you, if you use a generate, we're going to start fixing our anchors to be specific words. But when it generates the anchor for a text link, and if people know what we're talking about, like I'll just show you here. Um, well, they, they don't even do that in Elementor. But an anchor link would be if you put something like an ID here and then you would, tell something that it's ID content, and then you could pass links that would jump to that point in the content. It doesn't look like Elementor is doing that with their headings, the way that- Which I do. use a lot. Yeah. It's so like on Paymerships Pro, our anchor links, I don't know if this is one of them. See this like H notification bar is an anchor link. So we could send people a direct link to jump right to that point in the content. I'm already talking on my thing. I don't need a banner. Um, could just jump right to that. Point Somebody the didn't turn the banner off. We we always like to leave them on a little bit. If there's like serendipity that someone comes on the site and then they see the banner, like, ooh, now you know. Um. Okay. So before we wrap up and go, Stasha is in the chat and submitted a question. Oh, cool. Prior, so I want to address that. Um. But to be honest, Stasha, you may have to like email us after the fact to get like more in-depth answers. 
Um, we'll try our best. We will try our best. Um, okay, so the question is, we use the Edumal WPC Eduma? Mm -hmm. WPC theme and have an Elementor Pro and Tutor Pro licensed base beside the theme options. We don't want to use the Tutor add-on for Elementor because of past conflicts. Mm -hmm. We sell courses but want to make monthly membership only with Paid Memberships Pro. We have it licensed. We need to use the native course option without archiving. A tutor integration is already chosen inside the Paid Memberships Pro course setting panel. The problem we faced. The course option gives lessons without a topic. We need a topic because one course has, for example, seven topics with its lesson. The question is, with Elementor, what is the best practice for making the courses that can be visualized differently and have a topic and inside topic lessons? Also, can we create a user dashboard with Elementor? Oh, we can do that. Yes. Okay. Are the topics kind of ways to organize lessons in Tutor LMS? Is it kind of like a section of the course? Is that what the topics are? Or do topics group different courses and it's kind of like a category or a tag? We will find out. Okay. Hopefully. I think I should bring up that. Let me bring up a different, where's my other window? Do you have a courses add-on on your car site? Not on my car site. I made a default courses. I didn't make tutor courses. I used the default courses integration. This yes, is the, the first one. one. It's like a theme. Okay. It's like a a section of lessons. So it's like the course is called, you know, detailing antique cars and the sections are like interior detailing and then there's a bunch of lessons. One course, seven themes seven themes themes and then within each theme there's lessons yes okay and the problem is that on the look at the course page you want people to be able to see the full list of themes and lessons within them what is it showing right now i guess i have to set this up all right. I don't want to do it on this site. I need a new demo site. Sam, can you turn off my screen for a sec and I'll Remove. Boot, boot up a demo. Thanks. That would be a good one to use. My, 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 my. Let's do this one. Okay. You can bring me back. I didn't think I even showed anything that you all can't see. You never know. Okay, let's install. Wait, can I install this all? I can't get in Juma. Do you think it's a, a Juma problem? The problem is that there's no way to have topic only lessons when using native course. I'm a little confused. Only lesson. All right, I added Tutor LMS. Let's adjust these settings. We don't want this one, we want this one. Okay. How do you add Tutor LMS courses? Didn't I add it? Oh no, I thought I did. Oh, I installed the courses add-on. How do I get Tutor LMS? Tell me if anyone sees Tutor LMS. Am I spelling it wrong? That's, that's really weird. Do I already have it? Hold on. No, they're using Painterships Pro courses. But they're using Tutor LMS for... I think the they're trying to get away from Tutor LMS because they just said no tutor, no... I cannot pronounce that theme. Only Team the Memberships Pro native course. Oh, okay. So our default. Memberships course settings. Okay. The default one. You don't need Tutor Elements. Okay. Courses. All right. We have a course called How to Train Your Cat. These are the lessons in the course. 
We don't have something called themes. I'm sorry. I really, I can't make sense of this question and I'm really sorry. I would so, like to be able okay, to Okay, I think I kind of understand and okay. like, sorry audience, because this isn't like a kind of an internal project that nobody's gonna understand what I'm saying, but Kim will. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know how the um, map thing that I'm working on, mm -hmm. where we want it to have like one big course. Yes. And I'm breaking it down, but it's actually six sections. Yes. So my original idea was like session one is broken down into so many sections. And that way section one would be a course. But I think what Stasha is trying to do is the map is like how you actually want me to set it up where the map is like one big thing. Mm -hmm. And then even though I'm breaking down like section session one into three different sections, which would be the lessons, the like pricing would be one theme and then there would mm -hmm. be different lessons. And then like your value proposition would be another theme and there's different lessons. I think that they, okay. they kind of want to like layer it a little bit, you know, like have, okay. have the, um, the idea or the main concept to be like a parent and then okay. lessons within the parent. Stasha, if that makes sense, let me know. I think that's what you're trying to do. I'm working on building a course right now. So. Okay. Yes, you are. You are. Okay. <laughs> so I think your options are kind of. Um... Yes, I got it right. Okay. So I think it's kind of how you lay it out, how you organize the content is one thing, like naming it, giving, even though they're going to be lessons within, it's going to be, it's going to be its own lesson. We don't really have a way to define that as a section in the course. So if you want them all to be in one course, you'll have to make lessons that kind of interject in between. And then I think you can do like visually, you can do things like, you know, theme one, basic commands. So that's one way like you just get it to visually uh, look connected for how those things are. But if you want to granularly control access at the lesson level, I think if you use our CPT add-on, you can do this. So at the course level, let me just edit this one too. So you do or don't have to have those um, interstitial. Um, let's view this course. Okay. Theme one, you could or couldn't have this, say your lessons carry the themes forward. If you want to do members only for certain, um, at like a more specific level, I think that was a requirement, right, Sam, that they wanted to say like everyone could be in the course, but certain themes were exclusive. Um, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. So maybe it's just like, a structure thing like um naming I think, them. It's, I think it's a structure thing and i think i i wish i played around with it more mm -hmm. um i haven't yet because i was using just our courses default builder mm -hmm. for my course um but doesn't lifter lms have something where you can have like one course and then lifter lms does have, have sections parent and course child. sections yeah, yeah. I play with it a little bit, but not much. I might have a site set up. Like this is a Lifter LMS course that I have up and it does have like sections within um, each one and they do integrate with Elementor also. Um, so they're, it's like a more um, in-depth type of uh, course syllabus. I think for, Stasha, I think for what you're trying to do, I would recommend Lifter LMS because you can have those like sections broken down within one course. Mm-hmm. Our PM Pro's native courses is going to be like one course, one lesson. And there's not going to be much of that like parent-child relationship with your, yeah. your themes and lessons. We do have like, um, yeah, if it's just like a naming thing, you know, you might be able to get away with this. If it's access, um, you could try the CPT add-on. There's probably plugins that let you add like categories to other post types in WordPress. Maybe Pods does it. Um, yeah, I don't know if we helped, but I if you reach out in email, we can dig deeper too. Sasha said, "Okay, I understand." Okay. 
Um, oh, and then the second part of Stasha's question was, can we create a user dashboard with Elementor? Yeah. Can you demo that real quick? Sure. And then All right. we'll wrap it up. I don't have a membership, do I? Did I take my membership away in this site? I don't want to, I want to be a collector. I don't want to be a mechanic anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I have a membership level and I'll go to my membership account. So what I tell people when they want to do like a dashboard is make that membership account page the hub. And then you have to think, you know, what do I want to show on this page? So you're, you have a course site. What a lot of people want to put on there is kind of an excerpt of the courses, right? Some people want to put uh, blog posts from the members only category. So we can kind of showcase both. I thought I edited that to have those. CSS. Let's look. No. Hold on. I think that's right. No. Hold on. I want these borders out of here. Here it is. Oh, they're still there. Coding with Kim Live. They don't like me. Okay. I'm going to target it a different way. Anyway. All right. So this is uh, the version of the account page or user dashboard. Um, I assume you mean for the user themselves, not for your admins to like see members and users, which you do in the admin of the WordPress site. Um, but what you could do here, I wonder if they have like a posts loop. Let's see if there's like posts. Loop grid. I don't know. We're in new territory here. Okay. Isn't there a way to like... The first time I built a query... I was leaving WordCamp Buffalo and I was sitting in the airport and I got it to work and I just was that crazy person that was like, I did it Yelling. in the middle of the airport. Oh, here, query. <laughs> All right. Do they let you do like post types? No. Source. Courses. Let's see. Is that going to work? Layout. Edit template. Well, that's not the right one. Okay. Let's add featured image. Right now, these are posts. Okay. Let's see. Okay. That worked. I don't have images set on my columns per page three, let's say. Okay. So the act of like building a, where'd that navigator go? I like you, come back. Okay. The act of building a dashboard is really like, you know, think about what you want, what you want members to have quick access to. Um, and then you're just adding sections of the site with that information. So um, this is like a loop of courses on the site. This is not cute yet. We gotta do some more. I was always doing the stretch section. All right, let's see how we're doing. That looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want this one to be. Can you do like the content within? Let's, what if we don't say stretch? Let's do that. What will that do? Oh, oh Lord. There we go. Okay, I don't know. Getting a little um, better there. Like assume our, if our courses had images, oh, they're not even linked. Hello. That one doesn't have an image. I think it's because it's a, uh, can you make it link? Link options. Why can't it just link to itself? Post URL, Never mind. it can. Now oh, it changed it. Oh my goodness. All right. 
Oh, let's make it an H3. That should probably be an H3. Um, that's just kind of a, a page builder thing. You're going to have to think about your own accessibility. So for this page, this welcome is your H1. All the sections headings are H2s. And then if you have headings within, then I'm going to make these an H3. Okay. Save and back. Let's just add. Oh, it previewed in the background for me. Okay. We're getting somewhere. Sasha said everything is drag and drop. I don't know why my dragon isn't dropping. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just add. I think these would look better if they had some featured images, don't you think? Preservation. Here we go. I sent you plenty of car pictures. Yes, you did. Next, we're going to build an airplane site because I got plenty of those. Oh, things. yes, you do. We could do an airplane site. Do I get an image now? Okay, I got an image. So you could add section that was like, okay, the courses. There is a short code in the courses, in our courses add-on, or if you had any other um, short codes available to you that would pull in like a list of courses that the members take in. I know there's some in Lifter LMS. Learn Dash has short codes for kind of course progress. So you could drop in a section like that. Um, we have an article about building dashboards. You can pull in like this one has forums. Let's say you could pull in, add a section to the, to the account page with latest conversations in the forum. Um, you could add a section with like the premium blog content information, uh, like a category from the blog with, with a feed of information. So just like this one, you know, you can add a loop here. And then this one would rather be posts. And can we do it by category? Hmm. Term? Okay. Is it any term? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it just pulls in the posts that are in that master mechanic. Uh, these two categories, let's say. Oh, I don't have any category content in there. Uh, what was the other one called? Apprentice. That's more like what I am. And you could pull those in there. So when I think of user dashboards, I think just shortcuts to the value you're delivering in your membership site. So adding ways for people to know how to get to the things that they're paying you for. If you have like a coaching, you could add a link here um, to book with your calendar event or some other drop-in widget from a calendar tool. It really is like one by one. Every time we try to think about this, what can we do for sites as a whole? It's kind of like falls apart because there's so many use cases for membership sites. Like a listing site, you'd want to put, you know, a list of their active listings in the site and links to edit them. Um, so you just have to kind of start at their first principles. Think of the things people need to be able to jump to from that account page. They need to be able to see where their active subscription is and how to manage it, edit profile information about their account, view a history of invoices. Here I put an avatar upload form and then any other members only content courses, directories, forums and conversations um, that you'd wanna put from that page. And enjoy your Elementor Builder. Sasha said, thank you for your time and effort. I will play with these options. Yeah. Thanks and reach out. If you hit a wall and you're like, I can't do the thing I need to do, then just reach out and send a contact form. And then we'll just start aggregating information about what we can do to make these two plugins work tighter together. Awesome. This was on the bait underground of this was that Hello Elementor theme but I don't think any two Elementor sites look the same because everything's just custom built. Same with Beaver Builder. Yeah. They're, Elementor and Beaver Builder seem to be uh, at least similar. Yeah. It's not pretty close. No donuts. Thank you both. What's, where are we getting donuts? I don't know where we're getting donuts from, but if anybody wants to send us donuts. <laughs> you need to send Sam gluten-free donuts and you can send me gluten-filled donuts. <laughs> no gluten and no dairy, please. Oh yeah, no dairy donuts, yeah. I left the house, my son was making pumpkin scones from a box mix mm. and he had put them in the oven, but I don't know that he took them out. So I just uh -oh. had a thought that an hour and 15 minutes has passed and I might be walking up to 
black uh, scones. We'll see. I'm sure he did. Eventually, someone was like, something's beeping. <laughs> something's burning. <laughs> something's burning. Or otherwise, I'm going up to the house to eat scones. So I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, next time we are live, it will be August 10th at 2 p.m. Eastern. August. Um, I know already. Jason will be here with me to talk about site security and fraud and preventing fraud. So this is an important topic. We're seeing more and more card testing, more fraudulent accounts, and we're doing everything we can on our side to give membership sites the tools they need to stop spam checkouts, recover from an instance of spam and, and all of what on, entails with that. He's going to be talking about recaptcha. He's going to be talking about things we do to throttle um, checkouts, probably a little bit about Stripe Radar, which is if you're using the Stripe gateway, it's Stripe's built-in ways to uh, detect what looks fraudulent and what's happening within your gateway connected account. So a good good one to be a part of and, and know things before this could happen to your site. Yes. And after that, open office hours, Partnerships Pro, some of the team, not all of the team, but some of the team will be at WordCamp US. So if you're going, um, reach out to us and let us know. That way you can say hi. Um, I think Jason and Kim are going to be active on Nuggets Twitter at P, P and Pro Plugin. Um, pull up Kim's screen again. There you go. Yeah, pull it yeah. up. Yeah. So if you send us a message through through there or our contact form and tell our team, hey, I'm here, like, can we say hi? Um, we'll try to have some identifiable shirts on that say who we are. Or hopefully if you've been coming to our open office hours, you'll recognize my loud voice booming across the halls as my child says that I'm very loud. <laughs> or you'll see me because, yeah. you know, I, I actually am not only attending with the team, but I am on the organizing team for WordCamp US too. So that'll be really fun. Yes. First big event that I'm going to for WordCamp. So we will have like a month break of open office hours because we have WordCamp US, but we will be back. I promise. Perfect. So that's it. We will see you all August 10th. Thank you.